you should have watched my other tutorial on periodic trends and this is a web elements web page right here that I have in front of me. And what we're looking at is a plot of atomic radius um, as we go across each period and then down each group of the periodic table. So this is pretty cool. If we just look at this bar graph, we can definitely see that there's a regular repeating pattern and regular repeating patterns are called periodic, hence the word periodic table. If I draw, bring my cursor across it, right now I'm sitting on hydrogen. Um, you can see at the top left hand corner, atomic number one, and the atomic radius is given in uh, picometers, which is 10 to the minus 12th, which is a trillionth of a meter. And then I can drag my cursor across to helium, and you can see it has a smaller radius than hydrogen at 31 picometers versus 53. And we established that trend of a decreasing atomic radius as we went across the periodic table from left to right. Then I'm going to drop down to the next group, which is lithium. It has a larger atomic radius at 167 because we're going down the group. We're adding an energy level. Um, so we're at 167 picometers. And there's beryllium. So as we go across, um, the atomic radius is um, decreasing down to 112. And then I can go across that group to boron at 87 picometers, carbon 67 picometers, nitrogen 56 picometers, oxygen 48 picometers, fluorine 42 picometers, neon 38 picometers. So we have a decreasing atomic radius as we go from left to right across the period. And that's because of the increasing attraction between the nucleus of the atom and those electrons because we have a greater charge on the nucleus as we go from left to right we're increasing our protons and also increasing increasing the electrons but then we drop down to the next group and we're now adding an energy level so the atomic radius goes up up to 190 in sodium magnesium it drops a bit to 145 okay because now as we go across the period the atomic radius now is dropping as we go from aluminum to silicon to phosphorus to sulfur to chlorine because of that um, charge attract attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. And then we'll drop down to the next group. Here we are at potassium. We're adding an energy level. So our atomic radius has jumped all the way up to 243 picometers. And then as we go across that period, we can see how it decreases again. And you can see how it keeps on going down, but then we jump to the next period and it increases again because we're adding another energy level. So you can see this periodic trend, the atomic radius decreases as we go across the period. You can see how this bar graph goes down. And then as we go, jump down to the next element in the next group, so the next period down, it increases, and then we'll follow a, a decreasing trend again. And then, as, then as we jump down to the next group, it will increase again, and then decrease as we move across. So this is a really cool way to, to see the actual values and view those trends visibly in the form of a bar graph. What we're looking at here is a chart showing the relationship between the atomic radii and then that ionic radii. And I want to make some labels on this guy. And what you're looking at in the top left hand corner is the atomic radii. And it's shown visually by a sphere representing um, the atom, if we are viewing atoms as spheres. okay. And then in the bottom right hand corner would be the ionic radius. So I don't like these labels over here. Um, metal ion, really, I really, I really wish this said metal atom. It's in a neutral atom. And there's our metalloid. And then the non metal atom here. So the orange and blue spheres and dark blue spheres are the atoms, but in the bottom right hand corners 
your ions, your cations, remember, have a positive charge. And your anions, remember, have a negative charge, are given as yellow and gray spheres. So now we can look at the relationship here and look at lithium. Here is the char here is um, the size of the neutral atom versus the size or radius of the cation. It has lost an electron and look how much smaller it is in size. Okay, it's essentially lost a whole energy level. Um, and now what electron so what electrons are there? Those two electrons are drawn more closely to the nucleus as a result and it gets even smaller. And we jump down to sodium. Sodium has a larger size because it has a higher or one more energy level. But as it loses an electron to become an ion, the sodium cation, it becomes a lot smaller because it's losing an entire energy level as it's lost that electron and the remaining electrons are drawn more closely to the nucleus. So you can see those, those relationships, okay? As you go from left to right across the period, the size of the neutral atom does get smaller, and we discussed this before. That's because of the increasing attraction between the larger number of protons in the nucleus and the larger number of electrons. We have more electrons and more protons, even though we're not gaining an energy level. But as we go down a group, the size increases because we are gaining an energy level. But there's a huge difference between the size of the neutral atom and the ion. For the cations, and metals form cations, and here you can see this division between the metals here that are in orange and the nonmetals here that are in blue, and the metalloids are in green here. Um, the cations have a much smaller radius than the neutral atom because they've lost electrons, whereas the anions as nonmetals, remember nonmetals now form anions, have a negative charge, they're gaining electrons, have a larger radius because they are gaining electrons. So their radius is larger compared to that of the neutral atom. So the relationships we can see here are that cations have a smaller radii. than the neutral atom. All right, and anions have a larger radii than neutral atoms. And this really should be plural. Atoms should be plural if I'm using the plural form of radius here. Radii over up here on the top, if we want to change this, this should be atoms to make it parallel with radii. Okay, so remember here they're smaller because we're losing electrons, but for the cations, or excuse me, for the anions, they are larger because we're gaining electrons. And we can see those trends as we look at this diagram. Okay, the sizes here are given in picometers. And a picometer, perhaps you recall this, is 10 to the minus 12th meters. That is a trillionth of a meter. And you can relate that to nanometers, which we've dealt with a little more often is 10 to the minus ninth meters. So a picometer is actually a thousand times smaller than a nanometer. So take a look at the relationships between the neutral atom size and the cation size, the neutral atom size, and the anion size, and make sure that you understand that relationship. Cations are smaller than their respective neutral atoms, Anions are larger than their respective neutral atoms because they have gained electrons, whereas the cations have lost electrons. Okay, you'll notice here that as we move down in groups 4a and 5a and we get further down in the periods now, 
we have more metals across here. These guys are metals and they are losing electrons. Can you notice there we see charges of four plus and even five plus here for bismuth and we will discuss those charges a little bit later on. But for now, um, when we looked at periodic trends, we were originally examining this portion of the periodic table. Okay, and you should know those charges of the cations and anions versus their position on the periodic table. And these guys are pretty easy to follow as well. Okay, but um, in terms of the metals down here, tin and lead and bismuth and so forth, and the metalloid here, germanium, you might have to uh, remember that these form cations and remember what their charges are. But the charges do relate to the group number. Okay, so that makes learning these charges very easy, and you will have to know them in order to write compounds when these ions join together and make ionic compounds, we have to know what the charges are. So you are going to have to have those memorized. So again, here's the relationship between cations and anions. And we can go back and look at that relationship on this um, web page. You can see how it is indeed a periodic trend. It's a regular repeating pattern as we go across each period. The atomic radius goes down, it decreases, but as we jump from one group to the next, the radius will go up, and we can see that with these blue lines very clearly. This is going from one group to the next, from one group to the next, from one group to the next on down, from one group to the next on down, and then going across the periods.